Oh, there's a bro fist to you all! Running around like a blue ass fly today! Good god! I tell you, ever since PreachCon became a thing, the amount of companies contacting me, suddenly finding my fucking email saying, Can we be involved? Can we be of assistance? I'm like, where the fuck were you like six months ago, bro? Where were you then? My chair's broken. We're flopping. Where the fuck were you six months ago, man? Where the fuck were you? Oh, look how shiny I am. I literally have been running around like a dick. Uh, trying to sort everything out. Yeah, where the fuck were those guys then? Oh my god. Thank you, everybody, for just bearing with me. We are three minutes late, which is absurd uh, for, a web for a drama show. The web show is tomorrow. The web show is tomorrow. Yeah, it's pretty good. I've got all this fucking business crap to do. I just want to make videos. But in good news, I managed to level the shit out of characters in the beta this week. Which is hella fun doing that intro scenario 11 times. That was fun. Real fun, Blizz. Fuckers. Fuckers. It's beta. Let us skip it. <laughs> Let us skip the intro. It's beta. I don't mind if we have to do it live. That's fine. It's beta. Let us skip that shit. Please. Uh, we have a Destruction Warlock video coming for you tonight. It will be tonight. I did not have time to hit the render button before this show started. And that would have killed my PC. Uh, so that's one of those things. Yeah, legit businessman. <laughs> fucking sucks, dude. <laughs> it really sucks. It really fucking sucks. Let me do the intro. Yeah, it's good. Oh, man. Beta be beta. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Beta be beta. So it's uh, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, there is a web show tomorrow. Me and Mr. Ghosty sat down here fucking chilling out. There should be a beer. Bring your beers. Let's have a fucking beer. Let's do that. This week has just been insane. And of course, everybody angry. <laughs> About the balance druid. I gave a very positive review. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I was like, yeah, it's pretty good. It's not the best thing in the alpha in the beta. It's not the best spec in Legion. He hates it. He fucking hates it. What will satisfy this guy? This will. It's fine. I said that multiple times. It's fine. Nothing wrong with it. There's still the stuff that's better. That's my opinion. No. Unacceptable. The chicken is God. The chicken must be God. I'm gonna write some big walls of text. I'm gonna write some big balls of text to slag that guy off. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, oh, it was terrible. Starfall's really hard to control. So I'm told. <laughs> Why do you hate it? I didn't hate it. That was the weird thing. It's like, he fucking hates it. He loves Waller to Draenor. I'm like, I never said that. What the fuck? Hate it? It's fine. It works. It's good. It's not the best thing ever. That's okay. That's all right. It's decent enough. You know what I mean? I just think other specs are way more fun. Sorry. Sorry to ruin your hopes and dreams there, guys. Really apologize. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> however, there you go. I've got another spoiler alert. Destruction's also kind of average. So prepare your hate. Prepare your hate on that one as well. Prepare your hate on that one. I actually got less flack for the tanking video. <laughs> I got less flack. And in that, I used the phrase, it's a crime against my keyboard. I got less flack for that. That very defensive, the old druids. Very defensive. It's the best. It's the best. There's nothing better. I'm only joking. I get it. <laughs> Ready posted. Exposed. Extremes only. Yeah, it must be turned to 11. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. It's fucking... Oh, unbelievable. He's never happy. Last five videos were like totally positive about everything in Legion. Every video. Every video he hates it. Every video. Unbelievable, this guy. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What a shill. Anyway, <laughs> let's get on with things, shall we? Let's have some fun. It's Friday. I get to play with my kids soon. That's really exciting. Ah, uh, for me. Not for you guys, I suppose. <laughs> Not for me, for you guys. I have several stories in front of me. Boo! It should be good fun. Now, uh, to the Patreon guys, we are getting your messages of those who have been missed. We've only had about four so far, which is good news. Uh, we're going to wait till we've got like seven, because I think there's still some people who are like checking the dramas to see if they're in there. I should probably start adding an email to say, you were in this one. This is the one you're in. There's your name and stuff. So we'll use YouTube for today. And then next week, we'll be back to the Patreon guys when we've got more that will fill out a story. So that should be the general idea. Also, to the guys who are coming to PreachCon in just like six weeks time. I'm starting to panic a little bit. All these companies are contacting me. <laughs> and I'm like, we haven't even done the first one. It might be terrible. I might fuck it up completely. It could be a horrible disaster. Only funny to me and probably the guys who were there as it all collapses around us. And we just generally get pissed afterwards. Uh, but still, rather interesting to do that. But those of you who are coming to PreachCon, I have emailed all of you. And we've had it confirmed that some people like to go to their junk mail. The itinerary. Now, what we're going to do is pull that up and give you a proper link elsewhere. So if you didn't get the email about the itinerary of the whole day... 
all day. The actual thing starts at 10 o'clock in the morning on Thursday with the legacy video being filmed. Uh, so that's happening. So don't worry about it. I'll get that information out to you soon. And that should be all good. It'll be this weekend sometime. Emma's working on it. So it should be all good. Anyway. Let's have some fun. Let's uh, let's steal a guild. <laughs> oh, I, I click one story. It's got the word prostitute in it. Let's do some... Let's start with some RP. Hmm. Let's uh, warm up with some RP. Let's let's warm up with some RP. Let's do that. So it's all going to be good. Oh, God. Is my Skype not on thingy? Oh, my God. Fucking Skype. Let's have a business call over Skype. No. No. Let's not do that. Okay, then. Uh, <laughs> let's have someone. Let's have someone. Who've we got? Who've we got? Patrez. You'll do. Patrez. Mr. Patrez. Hero that we wanted. Trez. Yeah. It doesn't list the names at the top of this, but I think there's only one. No, no there's two, actually. Okay, let's go with this. Yeah. Boom! Uh, one other name, I think. Oh, no, we need two more names. Let's go with two. Uh, Chiffia. We'll do lovely. Boop, boop, boop. And one other minor name. Let's. It's not going to be like in the story very long. Who's regular? Uh, probably have their name before. Uh, I'm just going to put Delore in because it's not a. It's a very minor part. Okay. Okay. Let's RP as fuck. You ready? You ready to RP as fuck? <sighs> What's up, ballers? I bring you the short story from the humid land of Atlanta, Georgia. That's near the Florida. This takes place early in Warlords of Draenor, on the lovely RP realm of Moonguard. But fear not, friends. This is not a tale of Goldshire. It all started when I decided to level a mage, back in my very first days of vanilla WoW, staying up all night in my friend's basement, grinding, until we finally dinged for that delicious final time. We joined a raiding guild, and I re-rolled the week later. <laughs> Boom. Done. As soon as people started constantly asking me about food, I decided I was done with my mage. Oh, See? No backbone. What did we say the legacy of the mage? Hunters, healers, you get food. Everyone else can fuck off. You can fuck off. That's what you can do. Or you can re-roll. Or you can just give the fuck up. But here I was. Willing to try again. Willing and ready and looking forward to putting my knowledge as a law nerd to use in RP. We're going a different road, people. We're RPing. I thoroughly enjoyed leveling. And the little raiding I did was surprisingly easy. Sorry, mages, but in my books, I considered you huntards. Burn, motherfuckers. Take that, mages. Burn, we're talking about a long time ago. Well, it's what? Well, it's like a year and a half ago. Triggered. Triggered as fuck. I was doing my thing in the mage district, yeah? Getting my RP on, yeah? Wearing my robes. Got a pipe. Ready to go. When I was approached by a Draenei mage. He talked of the academy. He wanted to start. Yeah? Starting an academy, boys. An academy he wanted to start. I expressed some interest. In my defense, all I said was that it sounded interesting. But to him, I had begged him to join his academy. And that begins the events of this beautiful story. He asked me what sort of magic I was. Being an RP hero, I answered that I was an evoker. Coldly, Patrez replied, Mages can't spec evoker out of character. Mate, mate, no you're not though. Do you even RP though? Can't be an evoker, you fucking scrub. Mate, better play along. This is an RP girl, it's an academy. You can't be no evoker. No way. You gotta be arcane, frost, or fire, you fucking idiot. You're fucking stupid, mate. You're fucking stupid. It doesn't exist. An evoker is the simplest form of magic. It's where it all began. Surely he should know this as the leader of an academy. But whatever. If that is the way he wants to play, then I can suck it up and let him ream me. He can have his way this time. After all, I doubt I'd be a part of this new and budding RP girl for very long, right?
That's rare. <laughs> That's rare, but there you go. A few days later, I was once again in the mage district. Petrez approaches me. He starts to type in Drainic, which I can speak as well, thanks to a fancy little glyph. He asks a few questions, but then he leaves. Oh my god, the sun's just changed. Sweet mother of Christ. I'm trying to do a fucking show here. Fucking wank. Let me do this. Boom. Boom. Uh, oh, that one's going to stay. Yeah, there's a huge amount of sun shining right there. That's unfortunate. But there you go. There you go. That's what we're going to deal with. We could get over it, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> Good. So he speaks to me in Drainic. Sorry to ruin the immersion, but let's get back into it. The mage approaches. Patres! He asks some questions in Drainic. And then he left. Odd, I thought, but whatever. A few days later, I log in and join a raid. This guild was eventually huge. But then, Petrez starts to spam the guild chat. Everyone report to Cathedral Square. Nah! Exclamation part. I ignore it because I'm fucking raiding. Sounds square. I am killing Gorfin tonight, whether he liked it or not. I killed Gorfin. I got my tear piece. And then again in the guild chat. Now with extra caps lock. Everyone report to the Cathedral Square. Nah. I thought, are you fucking serious? Fuck off, dude. He then targeted me. Chiffia! Cathedral Square. Nah! So, being called out, I finally responded. Sorry, raiding. He was not happy. He then went full RP, balls to the wall, Bakaki mode. We must grow the guild and you need to be here to do that. The fuck I thought? You could do an RP event without me. But I gave in because I think there could be a chance for some really neat stories here once we got a good crowd. If everybody went, then it could be awesome. More than one I had planned involved serious harm. To one of these Patrez GMs. I get there. And not many people had fucking bothered. It wasn't surprising. Since you know. The guild really didn't seem to give a shit about RP. He marched up the cathedral stairs. Taking a stance above all of us. We need to look similar as a guild. There must be a standardized uniform for this guild. I have a new plan. We are going to do some Cataclysm Heroics tonight. What? <laughs> what? What the fuck I thought? Chafir! Make us a portal! It was getting pretty late. I had class in the morning. and did not want to go transmog running. I had work in the evening tomorrow. And I told him. To which he replied. Do you not want to grow this guild? We need the standards. To attract attention. If you do not come. You are showing. That you do not support this guild. And that reflects badly on the guild. And me. Now let it be known. I hate confrontation. So I did what naturally came to me. All F4 of that motherfucker. And went to bed. Early next morning I left the guild. Now, for any normal guild, that would be it, right? I dropped an OF4, I quit the fucking guild, I'm done. But this was no normal guild. This was the Academy of Magics. And certainly no normal guild master. So the next day, I'm back in the mage district, mage district, guildless, doing my thing. When I am approached by a man, a man by the name of Delore, disturbingly German looking, according to his bio, his story was that he, Delore, had been a minor since he had entered adolescence and now suffered from the black lung. Motherfucker, yeah? Down in the mines, in the pits! Stumbling into the mage district like he owns the motherfucking place. Why did you leave the Stormwind School of Magic, Chiffier? What? What? I am a close friend 
of Petres. Why did you leave? Something started to seem really weird. Why would this miner be asking me about this? I simply replied. I did not agree with Petrez's vision. GM Petrez is a great man. You, Chifir, are scum. And will always be scum. You aren't the only one who can speak, Drainik. I know what you said that night. And with that, he was gone. I thought about the RP value of this, of course. A miner who could speak Drainic, but whatever. It was then that I realized that, of course, this was Petrez. Petrez couldn't handle someone leaving their guild. Petrez, who got so but hurt that he had come to publicly shame me and call my character scum in front of all the other RPers in the area. He legit ruined my experience for a few weeks. None of the other mages wanted to deal with someone who they thought was scum. And surprisingly, the academy did have a good standing. He was a fucking child. I never played that mage again. From that, raiding an RP seemed ceased to be fun for me. Maybe come Legion I could try again. But seeing the power that could be done when emotes are expressed in public like that. This is my short story. How a German ruined my RP. Well done, Delore. Well done. Great sadness. Great sadness. Ruined his RP! You motherfucker! Fucking Petrez! Coming into it like that, like he fucking owned the place. No epic jewel of honor. No, we didn't take it there. Let's add some fetish into this. Boom. Let's fetishize. Well done, Delore. <laughs> you fucked it. You fucked it up, right? Right, I'm not I'm gonna warn you girls, someone's gonna be a prostitute. Not my words. Ruined your RP? Ruined! Fucking ruined. Right, we need the friend. Who's gonna be a friend? Pepperoni. Pepperoni could be the friend. Pepperoni. Pepperoni's the friend. A fetish, yes. Do you want to have a fetish? <laughs> all, the, all the people with princess in the name are like, me, I'll do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fetish guy. Graggy, <laughs> you sound like you've got a fetish. Graggy's in. He's a fetish guy. You know he is. Uh, E-girl. Alright, who's being the girl? Tits master. <laughs> it's got to be tits master. <laughs> We'll have tits master. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I like that. That works really well. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> this is going... I'm going to warn you guys. This is going down some serious fucking rabbit hole, man. Some serious fucking rabbit hole. You ready? Oh, uh, if you know what? I Even I call bullshit on this one if you didn't send me the proof. <laughs> What you motherfuckers get up to in World of Warcraft is insane. I'm <laughs> just fucking saying. You're fucking crazy. Hey, Preacher, I found your channel about deuce weeks ago. I've been binging on the vids whilst mucking about. Finishing what I started post-launch Kata. Earning my insane title. Can you still get that? No way. Can you really still get the insane title? I bet, have they made it really easy now or is it still hardcore? This is ironically appropriate. I can ramble a little bit, but bear with me. And excuse my dodgy formatting. I'm more than a little tired and not native native England. Okay. I had something of a negative experience with an RP server. I believe it was Moonglade. I didn't quite grasp the intricacies of server types when I started World of Warcraft. It was my first ever MMO. It may not top the other RP horror stories. But it's kind of cathartic, knowing other people have had it worse, as it makes it easier for me to let out what happened to me. 
You know it's gonna be bad. <laughs> like many other players, my friend Pepperoni got me into World of Warcraft. We went to the same college, we were about 16 at the time, pubes on the pitch, not a worry in the world. It was early 20 7 and the Burning Crusade had been out for a short while. Pepperoni messaged me one day saying how I should totes try World of Warcraft, mate. I was hesitant at first, having heard that apparently you had to pay monthly for a video game, which I thought was retarded. But he had some sort of Pavlov dog effect on me. Every time he said, you should play WoW mate, you'll like it, I'd always say no. But of course I would think about it, and inevitably got an itch to play. Long story short, of course, I caved and brought in. I'd done research on the WoW website, and mentions of playable undead, and the Tauren being big and strong, got my attention. And after much deliberation, figured in my newbie head that Tauren are Minotaur. They would be biggest, strongest of them all, and therefore with the best choice to be a warrior, as they would obviously wreck more face per square foot. Good man. Good man. Solid choice. Tauren warrior forever. Until you grow up, mate, and make an undead male. Everyone starts as a Tauren. Pepperoni, however, was into looks. He wasn't keen on me playing Horde. He wanted to be Alliance. He encouraged me to make a gnome warlock. <laughs> I want to be a Tauren warrior. What's the Alliance equivalent, bro? Pepperoni, mate. Pepperoni. What's like the Alliance equivalent, yeah? Of a Tauren warrior. Mate. 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 Gnome Warlock. Got it. Nailed it. A Nuzvik and Gnome Warlock is my first. I meandered about on some frozen lake, shooting shadow bolts at things. I wasn't sold on gnomes. Fortunately, Pepperoni had to go shortly after and leave me online in this strange new world, to which I fucked that character off immediately and logged on to my motherfucking Tauren. Boom. Boom. I made it on a different server so he couldn't follow me or notice that I had it. I also figured that the name of the server mattered to the character. Being a Tauren, I browsed the server list and found Wildhammer. A Tauren from Wildhammer? Sold. But how naive I was to pick a place like vanilla TBC era Mulgore as a first time starting area. I don't know what they've done. I don't know what they've done to Mulgore, but it has to be better than it was. It has to be. It has to be better than it was. I won't bore you with the nitty gritty of it, but in spite of the long runs and dying a lot because I was a warrior. And leveling a warrior was a man's game back in the day. And getting too excited over cold invites to guilds that I didn't know how to speak to. I was having the time of my life. And of course, like most lost little lambs, I stumbled into the barrens, where I got savagely bent over, lubed up, and taken by murderous giraffes. I started to think about what I had done. My decision to be a big beef burger. Playable undead, though. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Made my excuses to my guild that never spoke to me, that I'd be going away for quite a long while. I then proceeded to explore the pimping majesty of the undead male. You grew up. You made it. You made it. You made it. Months passed. A couple. And I decided to take a break from the hunchback squad that made up the horde males. You bastard. And gave the blood elves a try. The male blood elf felt fundamentally wrong the facial hair the chest puffed out stance which eventually led to me making a female blood elf warlock i had tried that before it felt a bit odd at first being a boy playing a girl but it somehow seemed better than the blood elf male and people in my friends guild were unusually nice to me they would give me low level gems oh a copper's worth of gems? You too kind. And be quick to help me with group quests. And for a long time, I didn't quite understand why exactly. But of course, 
It's I now I know. It was because they thought I was a girly. So enough preamble. Let's move on. Let's introduce our friend, Graggy. Multi-character syndrome was real. In both me and Pepperoni. So many alts just past level 20. That they would then be deleted. With the exception of my warlock. Who I was doing quite well with. We were bored one day. And so we started to play around with the name creator. <laughs> we may have been 16 or 17. But we might as well have been 13. Because after kicking off with cunt punt and bitch slap. After randomly putting words inappropriate for the game, suddenly one was accepted. We were amazed to find that Balsack was allowed. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we then made an orc hunter. Applied the Balsack. Smoothed it over. Gave him the scraggy beard and all, and dove in. Not 20 seconds into being in game, another player stood looking at us and shouted in all caps and slash say, REPORTED MOTHERFUCKERS! Our nerf broke! We were 16 or 17 and it was the longest 20 seconds of our lives! As the log to screen ticked off, I was worried that Blizzard were going to be that fast to delete my account. I had never, ever typed delete so fast in my life as I did on that character creation screen. We also logged off for good measure and decided that it was probably best to lay low for a couple of hours. Like we had committed a crime. Sure enough, nothing bad did happen to my account. But then Pepperoni did get an idea. To try an RP server. I had no clue what RP was all about. So let him make a character on my account. And perhaps impressed by how my blel female warlock was flourishing. He caught the Paris Hilton bug as well. Her flat chested charm seemed to work wonders on his male mind. And made a female blood elf mage. I couldn't explain how, but as the game was loading, the starting area and cinematic, and as my friend explained what RP was all about, in the back of my head, Admiral Akbar shouted, That's a trap, friend. After a few minutes in, and a quick level up, my friend was approached by another Blelf called Graggy. Graggy was a Goldshire star style RPer. His opening gambit was whether or not he, Graggy, could be my friend's personal slave. It's the first question you ask. You guys are looking for dating tips? There you go. Just offer to be a slave. Immediate offer to be a slave. And you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Not being fluent in RP either. Pepperoni said, sorry, no can do. Because of human rights. Yeah? Took it straight to the fucking courts. Yeah? I would be a slave, mate. Human rights though, bro. Human rights though, bro. Yeah? Human rights though. You can't just go around being a slave, bro. Human rights, bro. Face met my palm. Human rights was the best Pepperoni could come up with. Bit of a dipshit there, Pepperoni. <laughs> but this did not deter Graggy. Graggy continued to follow him. Begging him! Begging him to use her as his personal storage bag. The suggestions got really weird. Custom emotes at him. They kept going. They escalated to requests and even more emotes. Attempting to initiate water sports, pony play... And worse. Please piss on me. Please. Piss on me. Come on, man. You're on an RP realm. You craphead. You're on an RP realm. Pee on me now. Immediately. It was turning into an apocalypse of weird. I begged him to log off the character before it reached critical mass. The blood elf female was some sort of fetish doll in World of Warcraft. He eventually did. But he found it really funny. And we called it there for the time being. Much to my relief. It was not the optimal first time experience of RP. But it was funny for a little while. <laughs> Welcome to the RP, ladies. <laughs> the dumbass gland of mine, though, was tingling. I'd been playing my walk. Fellow members of our audience. A little bit more back on a normal server. It was around midnight. When something in my brain thought recreating Balsack, the bearded orc hunter, was a solid idea. 
but I'd take it a step further and make it on the RP server that me and my friend were being potentially molested on. If Graggy, the blood elf fetish doll, was anything to base a first impression off, Ballsack would fit right in. It was late at night, not a creature was stirring. Old Father Ballsack was alone in the leveling area. And I quickly leveled out of the area before, mo before, before more starting area weirdness could occur. Picking up a boar, naming it Heavy, Heavy Ballsack, and soon clearing Duratar of quests outside Ogrimmar. Eventually, I was spotted. An orc female rogue called Titsmaster. Around my level, no less. Panicking, I went to log off as this was the first person I had seen in game. But Titsmaster laughed at my name. She thought it was funny. I hesitated. She wasn't going to report me. She spoke in what I call broken English. It was clearly not her native language. As she said things like... What country is she from? Go on, chat. What country is she from? Somewhere with broken English. Let's have the broken English. Where's she from? You guys can pick. You guys can pick. <laughs> let's get... No, let's try not to be racist, though. Yeah? You all know I am a skilled wordsmith. Sweet Russia. Bulgaria. Brazil. The EU. <laughs> France. <laughs> uh -huh. Take your dinner, I wait. I can't do it. Meaning, eat your dinner while she would wait. <laughs> you guys are evil. That's some evil shit. <laughs> we leveled a little bit. Actually, RPing. We, were became, we decided that we were a formidable ambush team. But it was 4 a.m. And I was keen to hit the, hit the hay. A couple of days had passed. I noticed that she wasn't on during my early daytime. Only on the evenings and nights. Which sounded right considering she was clearly foreign. I asked where she was from. She claimed to be from Team Florida. But lived in the Philippines. And I thought nothing of it. As time passed, Titsmaster and myself were getting pretty close. We leveled together and got massively soppy by playing hide and seek in Ashenvale Forest. Well, gay. <laughs> Peekaboo! <laughs> you wanna, hey guys, you wanna do an event later? All us, we're gonna head down to Ashenvale and play some hide and seek. You in? Y'all in, right? Y'all in? Yeah? It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome as fuck. Yeah, man, it's gonna be so good. <laughs> it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good, man. Hey, what's love without a little bit of hide and seek in game? Just saying. Just saying. I thought it was dumb, but she seemed to enjoy it. And that was good enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> this is really stupid and I don't want to do it. So, I'm gonna do it. Because you're a girl, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Inevitably. Of course. Inevitably. Titsmaster asked if I wanted to exchange pictures. Not the explicit kind, mind you. A little weird, but I agreed. Making a disposable email account and attaching the least ugly shot I had. And exchanging with her. She was definitely pretty. An attractive girl next door saw. And despite not initially saying that she'd sent explicit pictures... She'd snuck a couple in. She showed all the goods. We got a full body. Bit of tits. Bit of bush. I was quietly impressed. Now, hindsight is 2020 vision, isn't it? And if I was a web people savvy as I am now, numerous alarm tripwires would have been triggered. But alas, both Balsack and me were inexperienced in the ways of courtship, particularly online courtship. And so blundered into the path of something wicked coming this way. A couple of weeks have passed since we met. She begun to play the poverty and suffering cards. I'm so cold. I can't afford heat. I wish you were here with me to keep me warm. And I'm so hungry. I can't afford food for a couple of days. 
What are you eating for dinner? Not suspecting a thing. I ate up her sentimental pandering. I yummed it up like a good juicy pussy. Ooh. It was dangerous. Not long later, the request to send her some cash rolled in. I wasn't wealthy at the time, so I explained that I didn't have any money to send. But she played the pandering harder, anxious to know when I would have some spare money, just so she could have the heating on for a few hours. She was struggling to feed herself, talking to me with bullshit about her last boyfriend cheating on her and forcing her to leave. I was engrossed. I was thoroughly within the spider's web. So when she, su she suggested that she move to live with me, I ate it all up. I made some bull about being paid at the end of the month, which she seemed to accept, and thanked me, and told me to sleep well, because she was thinking of me, and looking forward to seeing me in the real world. Are you getting scared yet, chat? You should be. <laughs> you should be terrified right now. <laughs> it was at this point... That even my dumb ass self realized that something was horribly, horribly wrong. Akbar had been sapped and dumped in a wheelie bin. I felt a pit of anxiety opening up in my stomach. Was I going to buy this stranger a plane ticket? Was I going to have her fly over and live with me? I knew something was wrong, but I felt compelled to help her. She was starving and cold. And I was in love with her. She had shown me pictures of her naked, for Christ's sake. What are we going to do, boys? We're full of testosterone. This titty's on the line. What are we going to do? It was a good thing that I was broke. Or I, or I know now I would have sent her that money. She did not like this, however. As days went by into the new month, she would become more insistent. Giving me details to wire transfer money to another woman who would pick it up on her behalf in the Philippines. I made more excuses. I took her sympathy cries on the chin. The best thing to do was to evacuate. We stopped leveling together. I decided the best thing to do was to hit the eject button. She followed me back onto my normal server. How, I don't know at the time. Perhaps I had mentioned the character in the past, but it terrified me. She threatened to report Balsack to Blizzard. Bricks were being shat. I was still young. I didn't want to lose my WoW account, but I didn't want her to follow me. What was a young boy to do? I couldn't ignore her threat, else I'd lose my account. I couldn't give in to her demands because I didn't have any money, and frankly, I didn't want her to be there. I couldn't report her to Blizzard due to the fact that they would then discover the ball sack and ban my account. I was at a loss. I swallowed my pride. There was only one solution. The solution everybody fears. What's the solution? What's the solution that you never want to turn to? You're old enough to know that there's pussy on the line. You're young. You're full of jizz. There's pussy waiting to come to you. Maybe. But you got no money. You're now in a trap. A situation has developed... I swallowed my pride and went to my parents. <laughs> oh no. It's the last ditch of the desperate man. Mom. Dad. It's all gone wrong. It's all gone wrong. Like a bucket of cold water, it became glaringly obvious what she was doing. My dad laughed in my face. Well played, dad. Ha! <laughs> Where's she from? The Philippines! dickhead you son dickhead <laughs> you and mum's like oh no this is my poor baby dickhead show me the nudes show me the nudes though son show me the nudes come on come on share with your daddy share with your daddy dipshit i did get a tart down i fessed up what i did to blizzard which is what they forced me to do doing my best to be as apologetic as possible about naming my character Balsack, and prayed they would be merciful as luck would have it however Blizzard didn't give a shit about Balsack. They were more concerned about a woman trying to get money out of people from overseas and snapped down on her like a lightning bolt, giving me a vigorous finger wag about my orc. 
who I'd since deleted anyway before I sent the email. It turns out she was kind of a prostitute, and the woman I was supposed to send money to was her pimp, and apparently Blizzard had had reports of this same person before. My stomach twisted in ways it physically shouldn't have been capable of. She was some kind of captive. Ah, see? <sighs> Playing WoW to get money out of Westerners. Like a gold farming, but not farming. Farming people, man. That's fucking cold shit, dude. That's fucking dark, man. That's some dark shit. I felt dumb for falling for it like the old Nigerian prince phone call. And heartbroken to boot. I genuinely thought I was in love with Titsmaster. It was not a high point for me. Not a high point. Titsmaster emailed my disposable email account again. Pouring her heart out and apologizing for what had happened. Reminiscing about how much she liked talking to me as a person. How I was genuinely a nice guy. And hoped I would find someone who was good to me. And maybe, just maybe, we could have another little chat at some point. She also included her real pictures, or so I believe. And they were pretty too. I don't know why she used fake ones. I was quite prepared to never play World of Warcraft again at that point. And the only reason I went back to playing was that old familiar twat, <laughs> Pepperoni. He keeps calling, and when he does, the wow bell rings as well. I'm possessed of a reasonable amount of confidence that the majority of our peers are decent people and that I just had a bad first impression. But I'm not keen to ever touch a dedicated RP server ever again, ever. Being older and wiser, however, I'm aware that several parts of the Philippines have relatively squalid living conditions. And so in a way, I can't help but forgive Titsmaster for trying to get some swag cash out of me. Even though her tactics were the dictionary definition of scummy. Yeah, we'll go with scummy. Scummy. That's cold shit, right? <laughs> That's cold as fuck, that story. It's a good story, though. Be careful. Don't send money overseas. You know what? So many bad first impressions, though. They are, we all, we've got plenty of good RP stories on here as well. So I'm more than happy to do that. I'm more than happy to do that. Our RP squad is solid. It's solid. We are going to go LARPing, by the way. Me and Ghosty. We're going to go and do it. We've decided. Got to figure out my costume. I, already, I have got my wizard's outfit already. That could be good. Uh, but it should be a good sale. Uh, right, then. We're going to pick the names as we go on this one. Because there's no list. And it's quite a, uh, quite a lengthy... Story. Yeah, oh no, we're going to do it for a video. <laughs> we're not doing it for a giggle. <laughs> we're not doing it because we want to get into LARPing. We're going to do it for a video and see how much fun it is. Uh, we're going to test it out. I'm sure that'd be pretty cool. I'm sure that'd be pretty cool. Right then, uh, what have we got? 15 minutes. Cool. Good day, preacher. And a bro fist all the way from down under. I figured I'd bring you a story of my time in WoW as a noob. Let's have a noob story to finish up. I got into WoW back in the golden days. The glory times. The age when men were men. And I, I was just a boy. The Burning Crusade. I arrived at a friend's house one day while he was playing WoW. I was initially hoping to ask him about a game we played last time I was there. Some sort of Age of Empire styled RTS where you combine animals into hybrids. That sounds like a porno. That straight up sounds like a porno. Does anybody know it? He still can't remember the name. Does anybody know an RTS game where you had to get various animal species to fuck? <laughs> and apparently that's 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 how you make new new uh, units. It does sound like a porno though. It does sound like a porno. Let's be honest. Oh, Sheila's wheels. Awesome. Impossible creatures. Impossible creatures. There you go. If you're watching, apparently it's called Impossible Creatures. Let's get a screenshot because I didn't know. I'd never heard of it. Impossible creatures. Oh, Steam Edition. Oh, wow. Oh, that looks really good. Cool. It's got a giant tiger crab. <laughs> okay. So we have we have to do this. <laughs> Oop. Yep. How can we not have the cow monkey on the top? <laughs> I think we have to do that. Uh, yeah. Bu -bu 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 -bu. Where am I? Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, you can you can kind of see the 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 rhino fish. Is <laughs> a baboon steer? <laughs> 
We've got a baboon steer, a rhino fish. I don't know what this is. What the hell is that? <laughs> What's that thing supposed to be? It's like a tiger, maybe? A tiger fish or a tiger frog? Frog cat? Frog cat? Oh my god. Frog cat. Yeah, man. Rhino fish, eagle, baboon moose. <laughs> I like it. Frog cat is the best. I like going with frog cat. Frog cat's awesome. Anyway, I still to this day have no idea what the game is. It's called Impossible Creatures. There you go. But once I saw WoW, I didn't care about that anymore. I asked him what it was and he told me it was World of Warcraft and let me jump in and try it. Playing his night elf hunter in Darkshore for the first time blew my dick off. I'd never played anything like this before. I was a console peasant. I was rocking that need for speed. WWE <sighs> Fucking lilac world. It's called Star Fox, motherfucker. Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, and Grand Theft Auto. Needless to say, I died almost instantly, not knowing how to kill the bears in the woods. This only increased my intrigue in the game. Once I was dead and running around as a ghost, I was so amazed. I actually enjoyed being dead to be a wisp. Oh, crap. Within a week, I bought an old school trial edition. Oh, shit. My fails with WoW are long and varied. It started long before I even got into the game. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourselves for all the sads in the world. When I started installing it, the pictures on the installation screens only made me want it so much more. After finishing the install, it seemed like it was taking quite a long time to patch, so I left it overnight. Australia is known for having the most dog shit internet in the world, after all. I came back in the morning to find that the patching was at 0.7%. I didn't understand why the game wasn't updating. The only conclusion I had at the time was that the disc must be broken. Oh, sweet Jesus. To be in that era of technology development. Oh. We'd never seen patches before. It didn't patch. What's a patch? We don't know. Digital online fucking information change. We had no idea. It was disc based, man. Disc based. We bought our games. Remember the date of oh, patching? What? Downloading data off the internet? This can't be fucking real. <laughs> Lol, I can't relate. I'm too young. I was born into an era of patching. I know all about it. <laughs> so I thought the disc must be broken. So I went to the store and bought more World of Warcraft. The ones without accounts attached to them were only like $5. But it happened again. The patching process just wouldn't go faster. I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. I asked my dad, who explained to me what dial-up internet connection was. I was trying to update WoW, and the potential estimated time was into the months. No WoW for me. Not long after our family got broadband internet, I installed World of Warcraft. Yeah, I was in. Didn't hesitate in making what I still think is the best race class combination in the game. A motherfucking dwarf hunter. He had the classic long bushy beard and long bright orange hair to match. Entering the world and pl playing properly for the first time is hands down the best experience I have ever had in a game. And genuinely one of the most fond memories of my childhood. Starting as a level 1 hunter in the Burning Crusade was a thrilling experience. Rocking auto shots, Raptor Strike. We didn't have pets at level 1. An arcane shot like the kids have it this days. Do you start with a pet now as a hunter? Real talk, is that true? No way. Oh yeah, well, Warlocks get Void Walkers for free. Is that true? You get a pet at level 1? You don't get to go and choose your animal at level 10? Really? Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, what do you start with? That fucking sucks. No way. Oh my god. 
Just... Class fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was uh, what a terrible experience it was choosing your pet for the first time. <laughs> I spent so many levels just using Raptor Strike because mana was a pain in the ass. <laughs> On wolves, trogs, and yetis until one day while I was killing the yetis outside the cave, just west of Karanos in Dunmoreau. I saw another hunter. He shot at a yeti and made green skulls come out from it. I message him. How did you make green skulls, friend? Serpent sting, he replied. How do I get serpent sting? You have serpent sting. It's in your spell book. I had no idea what the spell book was. What is the spell book? He told me it was on my menu bar near my character window. I opened it and found the new spells that I had learned from the trainer. They didn't just appear on my bars like they do today. <laughs> Not long later, after my mate and I decided we would play... Who's going to be the mate? Let's get a friend in. He's going to get Richard again. <laughs> Green skulls? The friend shall be Yoshane. Yoshane. Wow, I can't spell f at all. That's pretty funny. Yoshane. Like after Yoshane and I decided to play together, it, as it was half the reason that I had bought the game, he told me to meet up with him at the bottom of the ramp leading to Ironforge. When I got there, I couldn't see him though. He's probably just not here, here, here yet, I thought. We couldn't even whisper each other. We thought we had each other's name spelled wrong or something since we couldn't add it to the friends list or the group or even find each other. We were texting to communicate. We spent a total of about an hour figuring out why neither, none of us could see each other. We texted and texted and texted, wondering what was going on. Your Shane then asked me what server I was on. I told him I am Forge. I just figured everyone was in this world. But after he explained the concept of the server to me, I found out that Blizzard had put me on Kalstras, the recommended server. While he was on a different one, there was no cross realm or battle swag, so I had to delete my poor hunter. I went over to my friend's server. As time went by, I continued to level and play the game. I also created a furiously raging gnome warrior. The second best class race, cl class race combination. I'll let the chat decide that. That ended up eventually being my main. I decided at some point that it would be a great time. For the next logical step, friends. I'm going to make my own guild. I hadn't even hit level cap. I was around 60. But I should make my own guild as I had heard that guilds were run by assholes, And I didn't want to be a part of that. Yeah? Yeah? At the time of making my new guild, I didn't even have enough gold to get my epic mount riding ability. That was a total of 600 whoppers. Because of this, I didn't end up getting my epic riding skill until I was well into level 70. But making a new guild was the priority. I was to name the guild Walk Hard. Young me thought it was the best name in the world. I spent what at the time seemed like, and probably was to me, all the gold in the world to get this guild started. Bribing people into signing my guild charter. I would run around Elwyn Forest, whispering low-level characters, asking them if they would just sign. I specifically remember standing on the hills of around Northshire Abbey, whispering new characters from the Slash Who menu, or if I saw them run past. If they didn't want to join... I tried to bribe them, offering one gold each. And for one gold, many of them did it. Yeah, walk hard. Like you guys don't want to be a member of walk hard, fucking noobs. Yeah, you do. Once I finally got my guild up and running, the first thing I did was buy two whole bank tabs, which ended up draining me of all the gold I had. Yeah, priority number one, get guild. Priority number two, Buy some bank tabs, yeah? No one's going to take us seriously otherwise. And then proceeded to fill them. <laughs> fill them with the green items from the dead mines, which I still struggled to solo farm on my warrior at level 70, and dying a few times each time trying to clear it. I have no idea how it was even possible, but I managed to. Finally. Finally. My guild bank was now completely full. Every slot I had unlocked was full of greens, 
low level gems ore and wool from the dead mines pretty classy fucking guild i figured this was what i was supposed to do i had been in other guilds probably now called cesspool guilds who had their guild banks full of random shit like that it made me feel like i was running a good guild it was at this point i did the newbiest thing in the history of my time playing world of warcraft who wants to be an asshole? <laughs> Who's being an asshole? Come on. Someone do it. Someone for someone pony up to be a dick face. You know you're not in it for very long, but you are a dick face. <laughs> He's learning though. <laughs> He's learning though. Uh who's doing it? Mm, Aussie toast. You fit the you fit just nicely in this little Australian story. More police or is that an ambulance? I don't know, man. Fucking shit going down near my house. Okay, Aussie toast. Now that I had my guild bank looking like a real guild, it was time to advertise in trade chat that I was ready to grow the guild. <sighs> One of the guys who whispered me had a tantalizing offer. All I remember about Aussie Toast was that he was a paladin and that his actual name in game had something to do with burgers. The offer was a simple one. Aussie Toast said he was a high level player but was helpful and friendly to new guilds. He said that he would buy the rest of the guild bank tabs so I would be set for my guild. At this point the tabs were far too expensive of ever possibly unlocking myself. But I thought to myself if I had all the guild tabs that were all full of items that new players could use, my guild would be the best. So it sounded like a good deal. Aussie Toast was offering me what I thought was thousands of golds worth of bank tabs for nothing. He told me that for him to be able to buy the tanks, the tabs, of course he had to be GM. I understood this. I knew after being a GM that only I could have bought the bank tabs. So it didn't raise any concerns in my young mind. Although in my juvenile state, I was not even aware of any possible repercussions. What could go wrong? I thought. This guy's offering me so much gold. He's a good guy from a good guild. So I invited him and promoted him up to GM. Immediately I realized what I had done. As he kicked me the second I gave him the GM title. I frantically whispered him, Why, man? What the fuck? Why'd you kick me into my guild? Why? Why? Of course, Ozzy Toast didn't say a fucking word. Then he just disappeared. It was like he bubble halfed out of existence. Needless to say, I was so pissed and upset. Weeks of effort and all my gold had gone into making this guild. And I had just handed it to some random fucking guy on a silver platter. I tried to report him to a GM. But I couldn't even remember his proper name. And kept telling them that it was something like hamburger. <laughs> to be, to be that guy in the call center at Blizzard. To be that GM. <laughs> something like hamburger. Yeah, it had something to do with burgers. I don't know. <laughs> Some burger related bun, bun face, quarter pounder, something like that. I don't know, man. I don't know what the fuck to say. It was something like that. Please help. Please ban him. Please give it back. You might be wondering why didn't you just give get the, the gold to trade? And that is a really good question. Even to this day, I ask myself why I never thought of just asking for the gold. I guess as a naive kid, I jumped on what seemed like a really good offer at the time. So remember, kids, don't take offers from strangers on the internet, especially if they are the Hamburglar. Thanks for reading my little story, Preacher. These are just a few of my little noobish experiences in WoW, and I didn't want to write you a novel. Fortunately for me, I haven't made this many mistakes since then, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. <laughs> Everyone's going to guess the burger name. Choose the burger name now, and I'll name it as the drama time. No, can't see that. Oh, right, why is he wearing it then? All right, we can't put that on camera though. That'd absolutely ruin everything. 
If I showed that on camera, everyone would know. Immediately, everyone would know. So we can't do that. Hey, little bug. Are you the hamburger? I don't think that's good. No, we're drinking again. Why? No, I'm picking up. Well, I'll go. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got to go pick up my son. Web show is tomorrow. It should be good. It should be good. We have got lots to catch up on after our entire silly string web show last time. Hey, cheeky, mate. The Whopper, the Meaty Pounder. We're going with the Meaty Pounder. <laughs> and of course, if you missed us playing through Doom, it's now up on the Gamer Dads channel. Thank you, Mr. Delore. You can go to the Gamer Dads channel and watch that, which is a ton of fun. A ton of fun. Doom is an incredible game. We had a great time with it. I can't, I'm not going to show my little boy. He's doing his things. Magic music. Goodbye, everybody. Be good. Have a great weekend if I don't see you tomorrow. See you later.